Now, if you think EV charging is getting expensive compared to petrol, you're absolutely right about one thing and completely wrong about another. And look, in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly which is which and using real 2025 UK data that might come as a bit of a shock to you. Now look, you've been asking for proper charts instead of me rattling off numbers, which is fine, and you're gonna get them in this video. You want a network leaderboard showing you who's ripping you off and who isn't, and that's coming too. Plus, I'm gonna give you a downloadable calculator that'll tell you exactly what any journey actually costs. But first, let me ask you something. Should the government stop subsidizing EV charging infrastructure when petrol drivers are paying the same road tax for fewer benefits? I know, I know it's a little controversial, but drop your thoughts in the comments below and I wanna see if we agree on this. Right then, let's deal with the myths that are costing people money in 2025. Myth number one is EVs always cost more to run than petrol cars. And this one is partially true if you only use public charging. Myth number two, public charging has become as cheap as petrol. I'll be honest, that is totally false. It's actually gotten much worse in some cases. Myth number three, that winter kills EV efficiency so badly they become uneconomical. And that's wrong. I've got real world data to prove that. Now, here's what I discovered when I analyzed every major UK charging network over the last few days. You see, the price difference between the cheapest and the most expensive networks is massive, it's huge. We're talking about some companies charging you literally double of what others will charge for the exact same electricity. And what really wound me up is how they hide it. Peak pricing, connection fees, overstay penalties. Some of you are getting absolutely and completely done over. Now look, the numbers I'm about to show you come straight from government sources, real user data and my own analysis of every major network this month. So if you're making EV decisions based on old information, you're in for some potentially expensive lessons. And here's another question for you. Is it actually fair that Tesla owners get significantly cheaper charging while everyone else pays a premium price for the same journey? <laughs> what do you think about that? Let, let me know in the comments down below. Is that fair competition or an unfair advantage? So let's talk about brass tags. And this is the visual breakdown that you asked for. These are September 2025 real world costs per mile in the UK. Now look at the home off peak figure one and a half to two pence per mile. That's like driving a car that does around 160 miles per gallon and up to 200 miles per gallon for the most efficient EVs on the best tariffs. And look, even on a standard home tariffs, you're looking about 65 miles per gallon equivalent efficiency. So here's the league table that you asked for. Every major UK networked ranked by price as of September 2025. So you've got the Champions League, you've got the cheapest. Number one is Charge Place Scotland, often zero pence per kilowatt hour when solar's working. Number two, you've got Tesla Superchargers. That's about 37 to 45 pence per kilowatt hour. Then the number three, you've got Rome Charging. That's 39 pence per kilowatt hour from September. Number four, you've got Tesco at 62 pence per kilowatt hour. And number five, you've got Osprey at 66 pence per kilowatt hour. The regulation zone most expensive is GridServe at 79 to 89 pence per kilowatt hour after their summer price hike. Then you've got BP Pulse, which is up to 89 pence per kilowatt hour, unless you pay seven pounds, 85 pence monthly subscription. Ionity is about 43 to 79 pence per kilowatt hour, depending on the membership. That, that's more than double the price difference between the cheapest and the most expensive for the exact same journey. Now here's something you might not know about where you live. You see, London drivers save up to about 1,180 pounds per year compared to petrol drivers because they avoid the 12 pounds 50 daily ULEZ charge. This actually assumes regular zone driving, your actual savings depend on how often you're actually in central London. Plus from April 2025, EVs start paying 195 pounds road tax. But you know what, that's still significant savings if you're a regular ULEZ user. But if you're in rural areas, you're paying about 20% premium because there are fewer charges unfortunately. Do you know what, Scotland's got it absolutely made. Charge Place Scotland's solar charging and 10% cheaper home electricity is not bad. Ironic, isn't it? It's actually the darkest place in the whole of the UK and it has its own oil. 
Northern Ireland drivers are using Economy 7 tariffs to save about £1,400 a year. And the postcode lottery is real and it's costing some of you some serious money. So let me ask you this, should rural drivers pay more for charging when they already have fewer options? And also the government's spending about £63 million on infrastructure, but is it going to the, is it going to the right places? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So here's a little bit of context and let me share some real stories from people just like you, because otherwise these numbers don't really mean a great deal. So you've got Sarah who's commenting on Reddit. She saved about two and a half thousand pounds a year switching from diesel for her school runs. Mark on X posted about spending about 83 pounds for an 850 mile journey in his Tesla. And my personal favorite, a family who went from spending 700 pounds a month on petrol to just 103 pounds a month charging at home. However, <laughs> however, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. See, public only drivers are finding that their rapid charging can cost as much as petrol and sometimes even more. And that's the reality. If you can't charge at home, you're stuck using motorway services at about 85 pence per kilowatt hour. And do you know what? The split is massive. Home chargers are living in a different economic reality to public only drivers. And, th and that's something that the EV industry doesn't want to talk about, nor do they really want us to either. Now here's the stuff that they don't advertise. Connection fees. Some networks charge you about one to five pound just to plug in. Overstay penalties. So if you leave your car connected after it's finished charging, you'll pay about 10 pounds at BP Pulse after 90 minutes. Peak pricing that can double your costs. Tesla charges about 37 pence off peak, but 85 pence at peak times. And here's one that caught me off guard. EV insurance runs about 13% higher on average. So we're talking about roughly 629 pounds for EVs versus 557 pounds for equivalent petrol cars. That's an extra 72 pounds a year, which is not huge, but worth knowing about when you're calculating your total costs. So here's how you wanna avoid these traps. You wanna check Zap Map before every journey for real-time pricing. So what you wanna do is set charging limits on your car to avoid overstay fees and use apps like Octopus to find your off-peak charging hours. And always read the fine print on charging subscriptions. Some aren't worth it unless you're doing some serious mileage. Right, so I actually promise you the tools you can actually use and I'm putting together a downloadable comparison sheet with all the figures that you need. September 2025 prices, network rankings, regional variations, there's no email sign-up nonsense either. Just click the link in the description. The simple formula for any journey is take your distance, divide by your car's efficiency, that's about 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour for most EVs, then multiply by the charging rate. But honestly, apps like ZapMap do this automatically now. And look, don't just take my word for anything. Every price I've mentioned can be checked on ZapMap or the network's own app. And look, government grants, verify everything at gov.uk forward slash EV hyphen grants. And road tax changes, check the DVLA directly. You see, all I'm doing is giving you the tools to fact check me and make up your own mind. And looking ahead, the government's 63 million pound infrastructure boost should add about 5,000 new charges by the end of this year. Prices seem to be stabilizing after those summer, summer hikes. And new networks like Rome are entering the market with competitive pricing. And the cool thing is the trends are moving in the right direction, but pretty slowly. So if you're interested guys, download those charts in the description and I'll keep them updated as prices change. More importantly, tell me your real world costs in the comments. What are you actually paying per mile at the moment? So if this helped you make a better EV decision, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Prices change real fast this year and I'll keep you ahead of the curve. Guys, my name's Des from the Electric Chronicle. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.